Hey guys, how you doing? And welcome back to another video. So we've had a pretty fantastic blog that was released yesterday by Creative Assembly regarding sieges and how Siege AI would, is basically going to work in Total War Warhammer. So there is some really great information that has been revealed to us in this blog and there's been some significant changes to how sieges will play out in Warhammer as opposed to previous Total War games and as well as that we were shown some pretty awesome screenshots of how visually amazing these siege battles will look on the game. Of course, this information drop has come in preparation, as they mentioned in the actual blog, for the siege battle gameplay that they are going to be showing to us. And I suspect that will be later today with the vampire accounts being revealed, which, if you didn't know, is going to be live streamed on their Twitch channel at 1 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, which is in the UK and which is obviously Wednesday morning essentially and 5 p.m. Pacific or yeah Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday afternoon where they are based at the moment in San Francisco because they've got a bit of an event going on there I believe and this is where the, the reveal of the vampire accounts is going to take place of course the beware the eyes of March sort of tagline that's been going around recently so I'm sure this siege battle will be on that live stream later on today. So let's jump into it and I'm going to read exactly what they have said because there is some pretty awesome stuff which has been written down here today. So siege battles have been a mainstay of Total War for many years now and as with some of those mainstays in Total War Warhammer we made the decision to do them a little differently this time around in shaking up the formula a bit not enough so you won't recognize it we focus the gameplay in a way that makes sieges tenser and more thrilling from start to finish. In our previous couple of games, sieges often began with a lengthy bombardment phase, yes, which is absolutely correct, where the attacker would spend time smashing down the walls with catapults and such like to create more entrances to the city for his infantry and cavalry to enter. Absolutely spot on. This was followed by intricate street battles within the walls before a victor was decided. The cities were often sprawling with multiple capture points leading to some milling around and over lengthy, over -lengthy redeployments of forces as you decided which walls to besiege and which capture points to target. I can relate to that. It was kind of like that and it was too drawn out in some circumstances. So yeah, that uh, is definitely something I agree with. We've changed this in several ways with Warhammer. Our overriding aim was to make sieges more epic, rarer and special, creating higher intensity conflicts for you to enjoy. And we've done a number of things in service of this. So hopefully the epic scale of Warhammer is going to match up in these sieges, which by the sounds of things is what they're trying to do. So firstly, big siege battles are now very much about the fight for the walls. Sieges are fought along one or two walls of a city which directs the majority of the attacking and defending forces into a more coherent clash. Nice. That may sound like we're reducing your options. You can't attack a city from any direction now after all, but the result is generally more cohesive as a battle experience as they are every bit as epic as anything we've made before. Lay a siege to a huge dwarven crack in the vast spaces below the mountains and you'll see what I mean. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I, I, I like the sound of that because I love looking at sieges in previous Total Wars and having that clashes on the walls, that trying to, you know, back and forth, the, the epic center trying to struggle over that over that wall is just a it's a great prospect and a great visual experience so yeah i i like that it sounds promising so when the fight reaches the walls you'll find the wall sections have had a much broader footprint than before this means more room to maneuver flank and generally create similar offensive and defensive opportunities to those you had on the ground with multiple units engaged at once and that that, that does sound absolutely fantastic i mean you can see on the screenshots here the walls have had a very big sort of expanse of them. They've 
almost doubled in some ways. But you'll have to figure out how you're going to get up there in the first place, however. And swiftly, each race has its own flavour of powerful outward facing ranged towers firing on the attacker from afar incentivizing you to get your skates on essentially i mean that sounds again really good epic in fact but i hope that the the seat you know the towers the ranged towers aren't too op because i thought that was the case in attila you know you'd have a a, a range tower at the back of your base really and it could get an amazing range on it it could almost fire across the city and hit your attacking army at the other side it was that powerful and that f huge in its range i think it was too much and i think a lot of people did agree with me on that one so i hope they're good and it's epic as i say but not too much you know what i mean so siege towers and battering rams can still be built over turns of sieging on the campaign map and siege towers really are the optimal way to crest the walls for foot soldiers you also have the option of commanding your troops to use ladders to assault the walls. Excellent. Such a dangerous tactic should only be considered if you need to engage quickly. You spot a strategic opportunity or perhaps are fielding armies of greater numbers or perhaps comprised of troops who care little for personal safety. That's probably like me. Reckless. However, ladders simply do not offer the protection that siege towers can provide, obviously, leaving climbers vulnerable to fire. With certain army compositions, you could even forego battering rams. Certain varieties of monsters, such as the club welding giants, are perfectly capable of smashing their way through city gates. Oh, yes, that does remind me of like Lord Laurentian. Whatever comes to this gate, you will stand your ground, and these bloody great mountain trolls come through, smashing their way in with their heavily armoured, um, you know breastplates and helmets and everything look amazing that will just be incredible can you imagine a vision of that positioning the camera just behind the gates with your troops defending ready you, you know your dwarven armor so your dwarven units ready and then smash through comes a giant oh that would be just incredible i love the sound of that so to reflect the epic cities of the warhammer fantasy battles world we've also been working on much tighter more readable map designs invo involving broader streets and town squares to plan and execute your manoeuvres in. This clearer readability works in the AI's favour too. Okay, that's good because AI has always been a little bit ropey, as you know, into the war when defending, more so attacking, but again, very good. And you'll find it you and you'll find it putting heavy pressure on your city's victory point. It's a lot easier to have several units marching abreast within cities now which again broadens your tactical options after you've cracked the thorny problem of the wars and you're fighting your way to the central victory point. Races have their own unique styles of architecture too. Absolutely. You'll find so you'll fight through a range of vastly different looking cities. Excellent. Again, that variety is there. I'm loving. Look at this one. This screenshot I think it could be yeah, it must be it is definitely an Empire City. Maybe it's Altdorf by looks of things here. It looks incredible. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I, just, I just can't wait to play it. And that variety will be splendid. And that's what I'm hoping for. This sort of stuff is what I said needs to be there to keep me engaged from the restrictions we had in place with the regional occupation. And this is doing that job for me perfectly. Of course, all this wouldn't mean much unless the AI is equipped to deal with it all, absolutely. And we've been working very hard to make it sensibly challenging in this regard. Okay, that sounds good. We'll see that hopefully very soon. Hopefully as well, the battle we do see, the vampire counts, um, you know, the siege there, it won't be scripted. It will be a free playing battle and the AI will adapt according to how you're playing. It won't just be scripted because that's not gonna really show much to us is it we want to see things naturally progressing um so while attacking the ai will now execute multi-pronged attack strategies nice it will use all of the tools at its disposal simultaneously to challenge your defenses sending its siege towers to various points on the wall attacking the gates at the same time 
and deploying ladders when and where appropriate. In short, it's designed to give you a number of flashpoints to contend with and having a strong presence on the walls is important to avoid being overwhelmed. If you allow the AI to slip past your front line defences, the resulting street battle will be more ferocious and focused on the central victory point as the AI tries to force the battle to a close. Excellent. I really do hope, I really, really do hope this is the case, that they've really worked on the AI and have made it, that they've actually got, you know, a bit of sense and a bit of a brain behind them and that they do challenge us more and they make it that you're thinking, oh, flipping heck, okay, I've got to deal with that section. I've got to then go over and get over that part because they're attacking me from two directions or three directions in different ways as well. That will just be perfect. And I really, as I say, hope that that is the case. We've also increased the AI's range of tactical capabilities with some new features. The first is a greater level of granularity in its use of reserves. The AI makes its calculations as to the best approach in a given situation and if it feels it doesn't need to throw everything in to achieve its aims, it will deliberately hold units back in reserve until they're needed. Great, <laughs> really great this is. If it sees that one of its attacks is struggling and it has appropriate resources available to assist, it will bolster the forces involved by sending in the reserves. Wonderful, because you did find that in previous games gone by that they'll just you know, throw everything they've got forward to them, you know, siege or sorry, to, to plug the gap, to hold the line, to you know, defend the gatehouse, and that'll be it. And it'll just be an massive mosh pit in those choke points if they're going to sit back now it makes it look better it plays out better and you could have some great spectacles in siege battles now visually and tactically more so than you've ever had before so that is just fantastic additionally if you're charging into a siege and an ai controlled ally is reinforcing you it won't simply stride into the fray with its own battle plan it will take into consideration the differences you're making to the battlefield. If you open breaches, it will aim to exploit those. Rather than doubling up on, on work and making its own, it will take a look at its reserve pool and send troops in to exploit the breach you've made. This leads to a greater sense of support and collaboration from your AI ally. Again, this was a problem in previous games gone by. I always felt in sieges on Rome 2, having an AI on my side was an absolute, in some cases, waste of time because they'd just do what the hell they wanted. Sometimes they wouldn't even attack, they'd just sit there doing sod all. So again, this sounds wonderful. If this is always true, and this is the case, I will just be dancing around the room in my underpants because this, in fact, sod it, the underpants will come off because this does sounds just too good to be true. When an AI is defending a city, again, it's all about the walls. All the ranged towers in a city are now situated on the walls and only fire outwards. Great, because again, that was a pain. That was an absolute pain, you know, with these towers firing inwards, it's a nightmare. Too much, I felt, too OP as I say. So it says here, yeah, they're now situated on the walls and only fire outwards. They're an, import they're an important factor for dealing damage to, advancing, to an advancing attacker. These towers are activated by manning the appropriate wall sections with troops. Oh, right, okay. So they won't even fire automatically. You have to have personal humans or personal troops, I should say, there for them to work. So you have to have some sort of presence there. Okay, that's good. Even it takes that power, that overpower, I should say, away from it a little bit even more. So that's great. The defending AI will try to anticipate where your attack is coming from and have troops on the walls ready to greet you, thereby activating nearby towers and raining fire at you on your way in. So if you overwhelm its forces on the walls and break past its defenses, the AI will try to fall back into the city order to protect the soul. Central victory point essentially, usually situated in a large town square, which is like previous games gone by. As towers will only face outwards, attackers who capture them won't be able to fire into the city. So it plays into the defenders 
hands as well as the attackers. Instead, capturing the tower simply stops them from firing at other advancing attackers. I quite like that, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm buying into that. Provided the AI has the troops to do so, it will withdraw into the city, um, mount a stout defence and fight to the bitter end. And I hope that is another thing that's coming back. That thing that you saw in Medieval 2, I've mentioned it before, fight to the death, where a unit will not route, essentially, they're not waver, they're not retreat, they will stand their ground and fight till every single unit dies and probably that will be the case with the vampire counts more so than any other units so that will be awesome we're hoping you enjoy this new approach to sieges for total warhammer warhammer our community team will no doubt show off soon enough so you can see it all in action for yourself which i think as i say is that live stream yes oh yes i do hope that everything i just read to you there is the truth and it will play out like that because it could result in some fantastic fantastic sieges i mean obviously you know we'll get our battles in with the usual youtubers when it comes out and there'll be some phenomenal battles there but again if you cannot do that i mean if i can't do that i want to play some battles against the ai let's have a bloody battle against them that's going to be decent and that's going to have one that's going to provide some sort of fantastic visual greatness to it you know what i mean and it's just it's got some sub substance behind it and yeah that would just be fantastic i mean you guys as well you'll be enjoying this warhammer campaign hopefully and you'll get some challenge hopefully from it as well so it looks like a lot of work's gone into it obviously only time will tell when we play it when we see it the live stream hopefully will give us an insight into that as well um, or the, the, the siege battle itself if it's not in the in the in the live stream whenever it is we'll give us some indication if it's working um you know the more i see of this the more i'm feeling confident about its release as i said i was skeptical i was very worried about the regional occupation things like this make me feel a lot safer about things obviously getting my hands on the game itself will be the deciding factor but it does look glorious hopefully it will be optimized as well because these cities look so grand in scale and we've seen the system specs for the game if you haven't seen them yet, I'll link them down in the description. And I hope that they aren't too demanding because the specs are quite high. You know, for a recommended and a setting which you want to get 60 frames a second out of, you need to have a pretty powerful PC. And I'm hopefully upgrading my graphics card in anticipation for Warhammer. Um, but, you know, you need to have a pretty full powerful rig. So I hope the optimization is there enough and it isn't too demanding because... The amazing visuals, the fantastic CGI is great, but it all means nothing if it doesn't play well and, the, bat and you know, the battles are just a complete laggy mess, which is obviously what we don't want. So, you know, you've got to get the balance right in every single area, which, you know, these guys will, I'm sure, be looking at, I hope. Um, you know, we saw Rome 2's launch of the the game performance there was pretty bad and let's not hope that's the case again i really do hope not because there's so many promising things coming out of this that i don't want to mess it up mess it up basically but there we go ladies and gentlemen i think you can tell i'm excited i hope you guys are i hope you enjoyed this this little blog today it's um it's great yeah i'm <laughs> i'm getting very excited now 28th of may sorry 24th of may can't come quick enough i can tell you that anyway i as i say hope you've enjoyed the blog thank you so much as always for watching and of course as always until next time this is warrior spotter for now saying farewell <laughs>